Hi, hey, everyone. We are Hello. back with a guest. <laughs> yes, we so, are. This is Alexandre or Alex. I, I call him Alex. <laughs> oh, <laughs> everyone calls you Alex. Everyone does. Yeah, everyone calls you Alex. <laughs> Um, so we have him here for our podcast about uh, self-employment as a techie. I don't think this is going to be limited to techie. I think this is, this is going to span well, about so self-employment as a general rule. How does it go? What's it feel like? Before we get there, Alex, we know you, but they don't know you. So who are you? <laughs> All right. That's a good question. So I am Alex and... I, I like to call myself for a few, few years now as a hyperactive tech enthusiast, but now I move a little bit more in the consulting side into the entrepreneurship side of things. And what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I try to help businesses, I try to provide more value to businesses and to just increase, uh, let's say in terms of skills, uh, my, my upskilling, my own personal upskilling in personal a purpose. sense where I can provide more values to, to mm -hmm. others. And inspire others along the way. That's what it's I gonna, hope to do. It's going to be a loop. Like um, you upskill yourself to help others, and then they are going to inspire you to continue upskilling to yourself. Continue. To yeah, <laughs> that, it's that's, like a that's weird what cycle. we call basically a virtuous loop because it makes everyone grow in that process. That's yeah. absolutely amazing. That's thrilling, man. It's the best kind of relationship between anything. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, Alex, what do you do? You have your your own um, company, you uh, yeah. tell us a bit about what you do professionally, except inspire so, others. <laughs> yeah, that that's kind of goes by itself in the process, yeah. I, I suppose. So yeah, I have my own company and on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm on some consulting tours. I have some, let's say, contract that I try to handle on a day-to-day -day basis. And it spans from marketing, um, doing marketing, to doing okay. development, to doing business development at the same time. So it's a quite wide range of skills that I try to, let's say, juggle mm -hmm. with on my day-to-day -day, day, day -day basis. Uh, yeah. Okay. Which, which actually we'll get into. See, Mar see how inspiring he is, Marine. No. It <laughs> is. I'm like, you know, I'm asking myself, do all developers need to do that? Like marketing, coding? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it like... You are getting right so, into the something. topic. Yeah, that's fine. Do you want to talk about something um, else first? It's, it's, no, no, no. It's, it, no I guess fine, it's time to dive in. Yeah. yeah, it's time. I guess it's a, for me personally, it was a mindset shift that occurred when I started this whole freelancing and entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey. And I, let's say, kind of understood that you have to be able to provide value to your customers, basically. And to be able to do that correctly, you have to be able to communicate that value uh, properly so that the person and the business owner gets to know what you do and what you can provide to them. And this is where exactly that you kind of kickstart this process, this becoming, and to get more onto the salesmanship side of things. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of things that just uh, flow from that, like marketing, yeah. copywriting, and and yeah, no upskilling on those, um, let's say, non techy skills, but yeah. as well as important for, let's say, the overall progression. Yeah, this is, okay. this is something really common. Um, you guys watching, you might have heard, um, these guys know. Um, actually, <laughs> Alex's journey and I is not, it's, it's not that different. Um, we've kind it's of very been through similar. Yeah. It's I was going to ask this. You can relate <laughs> okay. to Alex very well, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's everything he says makes so much sense. Um, at some <laughs> point, I was I mentioned this yesterday, I think. I was freelancing as well. I was working um, so for myself on projects. And when you mm. start freelancing, you start getting directly in touch with customers, mm. with businesses. And mm -hmm. it's you can no longer just be a techie because yeah, you don't Yeah, and the language have... you use as well have to adapt to that. Adapt. Yeah, it has to evolve. Mm. Yeah. You need to speak my language, then. We yeah, have exactly. to speak everyone's <laughs> language. Exactly, exactly. A tech language, a business owner language, a salesman's yeah. language. Yeah. It depends on who is in front of it. Because, you know, when you are exactly. in a yeah. company, uh, you have a role, you have a specific role, and they need you for a specific set of skills. I'm quoting Liam Neeson, I think. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, once you break outside that box, you go free freelancer mm -hmm. 
pun intended. Mm. Uh, <laughs> at that point, you're no longer in that box. Yeah. yeah. So then you have to, um, like Alex said, you have to upskill. You have to, on your own, see how you can do, where you can get the knowledge, and prepare yourself to be everything. Yeah, but, and basically, <laughs> by starting this process, you kind of understand that you have to do that quite early. Because yeah. I would suppose if I stayed an employee, um, that process mm. would, would have come later, let's say, mm. at a later stage of my life. And as I decided to exit that employee seat and just say, OK, I'm going to do this on my own now. I have that vision to be a business owner. What kind of things, what kind of steps I need to take to, to make me reach that direction I wanted to, I want to yeah. aim to. To reach the so, goal. To reach that goal. So, and this is a very important point as well because um, you've got to have a vision for yourself first before you, mm -hmm. you embody yourself on this journey. Uh, and, and there's a psychological reason as well there because as uh, you know, humans, we are mm -hmm. basically aiming creatures because we look at a point to walk towards that point. So that's basically okay. what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So in your life as well, you have to have, you have to aim in the distance. You have to ha to have that mm -hmm. vision, and then you walk towards it. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> that that was very deep, but very true. I get what yeah. you mean. Yeah, and you get it. Like it's it's that first step that usually people are more hesitant to take it. Um, exactly. That's where the goal becomes important. You have you need to have that vision, that goal, and you need to know that I have to step out if I want to reach it. Um, and this depends. It's it's not to say that this this podcast is about self employment, and we're already mm -hmm. in that topic right now. But it's not to say that um, everyone should be self employed. I I don't actually believe that. It depends on people a lot. Mm -hmm. But the yeah, it problem depends is on your own objectives. Huh? Yeah. What do you want? Goal, yeah. Do you want to go in your life? Yeah. 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 But um, no. But what what's um, what's counterproductive to this notion that, yeah, you have to make the choice is a lot of people, mm. they don't even realize that, you know, self-employment is for them just because they have this uh, fixed way of thinking that um, um, I go to college, I go to univers um, secondary school, I go to university, I get a job. You know, they, they mm. are... Yeah, this is the mind the right race there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and they join it. And once you join, for example, a company or, or you start on that track, you get bombarded with information that, yeah, you need to like get promotions, you need to grow in the company, you need to... So they, mm -hmm. they, they, without them That's knowing... That's not bad in itself. Yeah. It's a track, let's say. It's, it's a, a it's, track. It's a very own track. And uh, let's say that the consulting track, the solopreneur track and the business track is something alongside with it because as business owners maybe in the future we will need employees at some point and that's very fun. that's fine that's fine mm -hmm. um because yeah but the, we got to start somewhere anyway exactly so maybe that's the that's the path to take actually you yeah. have to know what's in the corporate world how how to mm -hmm. grow in the corporate world and then it will inform you about you know what how kind of skills to. exactly yeah. what how how you need to progress in that in that world and then you have to discover that this is not for you and maybe you need to do something else you mm, have yeah. to do it you have to this step is, on that on that journey yeah this is uh, this is this kind of reminds um i think i'm going to guess that it was more or less maybe the same reason for you as well <laughs> this I was reminds ask how did you decide like to to go to do to go for it yeah no, I'm not going to go into the... We'll, we'll leave that question okay. for Alex to reply. <laughs> what I'm talking about is um, the, the thing that you mentioned about um, being part of a company and working in that um, system, in that ecosystem, in that environment. You have to do it maybe to, to learn what's it like and so on. Um, that's a lot... It, it reminds me a lot of um, when I left university, I knew I wanted to become um, something else. I wanted to... I, I wasn't sure yet, but freelancer, yeah. business... But you had the broad vision in, in your mind. Exactly. I wanted something of my own. So that was yeah, the vision. Probably that was enough to kickstart the process. <laughs> exactly. But I also acknowledged that, okay, I want something of my own, but 
I'm from the university. I don't have field experience. I don't know exactly. anything about it. And that's why I did. I never like just. Um, I, I never just went right into the into the battlefield. I first um, worked with companies, and even today, I stay in touch with businesses, with companies, stay in touch with oh, their processes. You, we've got to do that. We have You've to, got to do stay that. relevant yeah. and understand what's happening alongside with what we're doing because yeah. we work with those businesses in the end. Exactly. So you have to know their their mindset, what's important to them. So yeah, exactly. Marine, ask your question. <laughs> yeah, how did you decide that, like, you know, a strict nine to five job was not for you? What made you choose to go entrepreneur? I guess I, it will join a little bit what Tidush said. Early on, I had this broad vision that I wanted to have a business. I wanted to have my own thing. And for in the future, I just didn't know how to get there. I guess th the steps will, they just reveal themselves along the way. Uh, this is how I felt it. And basically this had like, it was like a seed that was germinating like gradually in my, in my mind as I continued th this journey. And then mm -hmm. at some point things just got aligned in a sense, circumstances, yeah. the drive that I had. And I was in a phase in my life where basically I had to be on the move every time. And I knew that, yeah, now nine to five is not really for me at this moment. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to say, I decided to, let's say, to jump right into it. And that mm -hmm. was the best decision I made <laughs> at this point. Because really, it, it, it just kickstart the process. It's, it's putting one step forward. And then, you know, just like the strategy games, maybe we just could relate to that. It's when you discover land that the land unfolds in, in front of you. And yeah. it's exactly that, you know, there are things that you don't know yet. And it's just you when you put one foot forward. Yeah. 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 There's this need of exploration. Need to, yeah. yeah. And as, when you put one foot keep... forward. Yeah. yeah. As you Go keep, <laughs> as you keep <laughs> walking and progressing, you know, things just reveal themselves, themselves mm -hmm. in front exactly. of you and then... And then, you know, you just see more and then you know that, ah, okay, now I know That's... that I need to learn this, I need to upskill there. Exactly. And you get that feedback from, uh, let's say, the process that you have started or kick-started. It's just a like, two-way communication with the world, basically. Yeah. Would... And you still have to keep whatever you did in hindsight as well. So this is, this mm -hmm. is like the perfect perfect way to describe this as you keep walking you're you're discovering new lands oh, yes, but exactly. those that are yeah. behind they're still here you don't really lose them so that's how that's how actually you go into all these fields as a self-employed um as a yeah. self-employed individual true you have to <laughs> you have to you, basically. you don't just have to i don't want to put it's, a negative it's necessary note let's say it's necessary if you want to continually progress in that direction and not, let's say, at some point say, yeah, I'm going back to this employee uh, nine to five uh, lifestyle. You've got to adapt and upskill and change with the demands of, let's say, what you discover as skills that you need because mm -hmm. it's a two-way complication with, with your day-to-day, -day, let's say, experience, I would say. And uh, it just becomes natural to discover the new things that you need to learn along the way. And then, you know, you've got to have some uh, strong self-learning abilities. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really one of the primary skills, basically, mm -hmm. that uh, maybe you we, we, we nurtured that, basically. Yeah. You learn how to self-learn, you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a skill in itself, you know. <laughs> and, and it's good to, to know that it's a skill because you can, be, you, you can get better at it. Because it's yeah. a skill, you can shape it. Um, okay. so this, you can, you can already see that Alex, he has some kind of passion when he's talking about this. Um, so I wanted, I wanted to go a bit into that. Um, you, you have, you've, you've always had a passion for tech. You had a passion to learn things, to grow, how this, um, how this interacted with your mindset and how this kind of feeds that mindset and helps you just keep growing and keep going. Want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, why not? Um, as you mentioned, yeah, I'm still very passionate about tech and uh, this is my day-to-day -day 
like the driver that allows me to do the things that I want to do on a day to day basis. And as you progress, let's say on this journey and and personally, and I I want to get better on my field as well because I'm doing yeah. tech. I want to get better mm -hmm. in, in that field. And it kind of I see it a little bit like you become a T-shaped person, like you have a strong let's say, feel that you can rely on. And then on top of that, you can discover and explore basically different skills that will just like agreement that one, uh, let's say, expertise that you ground yourself with, you know, that you can come back to as this passion, as, as this um, thing that makes you want to go forward, you know, for me, yes. coding on a day-to-day -day basis is, is absolutely necessary. That's <laughs> that's the one thing that I do every day, on top of that's, everything else. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 how that's why we have pet projects here and there. Things, we, <laughs> all those true, things we yeah. start. Not not all of them get completed, but mm -hmm. they were there. <laughs> but all from all of them, you get to learn something. Yeah, from all of them. That's kind of even that's if they're not com right. completed, you know that you encountered some. Let's say some complexities, some issues there that you earn some learning from that pet yeah. project and that you could mm -hmm. reuse it on another project, right? That's a little bit why we do it as well. We experiment, we earn the knowledge, and then we just yeah. sell it over elsewhere. <laughs> okay. We do it for fun. <laughs> <laughs> we do it for, and it's a fun process, exactly. That's, that's, and it has to be fun, of course. Yeah. It has to be fun. Yeah, this is this is where this is kind of the point about the passion um, that I was talking. Well, um, I asked you about um, yeah. if you are going to be self-employed or if you want to grow your own business, um, you can't do it half-heartedly. Normally, you need you need uh, a driver. You know, it's not it's not that easy when you hear it's it in theory. Easy. Yeah, you, you hear that, yeah, um, you discover things, you learn things, you grow. It sounds like you're just leveling, leveling up in a game, but, you know, that's, <laughs> that's not exactly... It's, it's not a never-ending game. <laughs> yeah, that's not how it goes. There's, there's work behind that. Like you said, you have to learn how to self-learn. You, you have to put in the effort, put in the time. Um, there are failures. Exactly. You fall back. You have to, you know, you have to get back up oftentimes on your own. So there is the hardships that is related yeah, to being self-employed. And basically the nine to five kinds of become nine to nine in that sense. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's, it's not it's not like you, you you go from nine to five to um freedom. That's maybe the wrong yeah nine. conception of it because <laughs> to do all these things you got to invest the time to to learn on those that's a new skill set that you have to nurture in order to progress properly mm -hmm. in that, let's say, uh, in that journey. So at some point, maybe you don't count the hours be because yeah. you, you have that strong drive and you have the vision. You, you got what to you put to everything into it. Yeah. So you just do it. You just I'm, I'm quite exactly. a lot of just do it is what, Nike? Sorry, Nike. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just build Don't, it. Just build your future. You know? Yeah, just you build know. it. There we go. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's <better. laughs> We're not stealing from everyone. We're just improving on it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you need to have you need to have that drive. This is the important part because, like you said, it's it's nine to nine. There is a lot of work involved, um, and if you see it as work, if you see it as ah. I, mm -hmm. I have to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. then um, I'm not saying that you're gonna you're gonna fail. No, you you could progress, but it's not gonna be um, that encouraging or that um, rewarding. That's the word I was looking for. It's not gonna feel as rewarding or as powerful you as you could. You have to see it as an investment, basically. Exactly. As an upfront so, investment in terms of your time, uh, mm -hmm. you can invest in a business in many ways, not just in terms of money. In terms of money, yeah. you can invest in terms of time, in terms of learning new skills, because that will make that better tomorrow. You know, the, mm -hmm. the nine to nine thing that you're doing today is for a purpose. You're doing that to build something for yourself tomorrow. So and this one, when you have that problem. mindset, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's it no more feels like work. It feels like mm -hmm. you're really building your future. You're really building something. This is Marine is listening to us. Like this sounds I feel like, like no. I feel <laughs> like you really need to like you know be passionate about it. 
You do? Like, if you're not, you just, like, I feel like people would give up. Yeah. Because, like... Hard. I think it's so easy to give up as well, eh? if you don't have mm-hmm. that strong passion and drive and mm-hmm. the aim to keep going. And yeah. one thing that really helped me there is um, a book from a man called Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Dad mm-hmm. Poor Dad book. And mm-hmm. in that book, there was one diagram that really nailed it for me. It's like the, the quadrant. ESBI quadrant, the cash flow <laughs> quadrant, exactly. And this is, this is exactly the path that I'm trying to put myself onto. And basically what it explains to you is that there's the first quadrant, which is the employee quadrant, the E quadrant, and then mm-hmm. you got to move to the S quadrant, which is self-employed. And it doesn't mm-hmm. stop there. That's the thing. It doesn't stop there. And then from the self-employed, you move to the business owner quadrant and finally to become an investor. Yeah. So it kind of mm-hmm. burn this path into your brain. And then mm-hmm. what you're doing on a day-to-day basis is to basically move a quadrant and move to a better future for yourself. Yeah, that's the game. That's an awesome that's way to game. see things. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, someone just mentioned this in the live chat that um, he thinks, uh, Percy, he thinks that my, that kind of mindset should be taught at the very basic level in school. And sadly, we and don't taught, promote yeah. that. Um, There's a lot of subjects that are not taught at school. For example, the subject of money. Uh, like yeah. It's, it's explained yes. in a Robert Kiyosaki book. Like why, why school doesn't explain that you have to understand capitalism, that you have to understand how mm. money works. Uh, this is this is a subject that is not touched at all, and it's, you've yeah. got to be financially literate in order to to do what you have to do in your life, mm-hmm. and and this is something that kind of plugs into this consultancy vision that you got you got to know the financial aspects of things as well. Yes. you've got to yeah. know that. That was a big challenge for me. I'm gonna, for me I'm gonna, gonna, yeah. <laughs> I have uh, to build okay. that profit and loss statement to do that. Pro- yeah sort of projection and to file your taxes on taxes on your own like the money side of things becomes more and more present and how mm-hmm. to think about money how to invest your money and those sort of things that are not discussed at all oh, yeah that's cool. Um, um, yeah, when you were you were talking about um, the the fact that investment financials are not taught mm-hmm. really at all in school, <laughs> they teach you. They teach, they teach you accounting, they teach you business, but they don't really teach you what happens in there. How do you use that money? How Real money, life stuff. How to yeah. invest it, basically. Money mm-hmm. shouldn't be... Um, this, is, this is another misconception that it's a good thing we are on the subject of money. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think that going self-employed or having your own business because you have your own business, you know, they, they think that the money comes with. That's not the case. You... Mm-hmm. you you actually ah, earn that, that's, money. That's a very nice topic. Um, yeah. <laughs> I see it in two, there's two components of that one. And I touch on the value aspect and on the salesmanship aspects. The money kind of, let's say, is a derivative of those two things. Yes. Because if you know the value you can provide and you know how to sell it, how to price it correctly, you can get the cash flow that you want out of it. And yeah. I see consulting and freelancing a little bit like an, a value multiplier and a money multi- multiplier at the same time. Yeah. If you know how to multiply that value, you know how to mi- multiply that money that you're getting in, basically. Yeah, and, and, and I also think this is, this is kind of a personal opinion, but um, it, it might be shared or not, that money isn't really the goal. I mean, if your goal is just to get money, there are other ways to do it. There are actually maybe yeah. easier ways to do it, possibly. But yeah. um, money shouldn't be treated as a goal if you are going down this route. Money should be treated as a tool, rather. Also, money is like the derivative of what you're doing. If you, if you the money accompanies that. It's a reward, yeah. basically. Like, yeah. You know you're doing something good when the money comes out of it. Mm-hmm. You're helping yeah. people. People are finding value. You're helping businesses. Like money comes out of those, uh, let's say, value proposal and value providing. Yeah, aspects. and that's when yeah. that's when you know that 
yeah, probably the money that you just got, this is probably where you should be investing it because you can mm -hmm. see that it has some potential. Of course, this is all very generic we are talking <laughs> about. We are not yeah, going to go into financials in a, in a podcast. But yes. uh, yeah, that's the, that's the gist of it. Um, let's see if someone has... Ah, they teach you to pass exams, not build curiosity. <laughs> yeah, I, I had this something. is a good skill as well. Curiosity. Like, exam taking is a really <laughs> oh. good skill to, to have. I read, <laughs> exam a book, taking. I, I read a book at some point from Cole Newport. Uh, uh -huh. I think the book's name is uh, Straight A Student. Basically, it teaches you how to be a straight A student, like how to uh -huh. nurture and develop that exam taking skills that will mm -hmm. allow you to just get A's at your exams. <laughs> Like this is this is subject on exam taking and getting straight A's. Getting straight A's so, uh, has to be learned. It's a skill. Also. It's a skill. <laughs> it, it is because you can yeah. know your subject, but if you don't know how uh, the mindset exam, of, yeah. of the lecturer or the mm -hmm. teacher, uh, how he would correct your your let's say your essays or your answers, you have to meet him halfway. To yeah. you, you might yeah. have a good answer yeah. if you don't put it in a shape that he likes it. You might not get that A. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah, skill. yeah. Yes, that's it's, it's true. not. It's not. It's not really just about knowing. It's about um, not just about knowing the subject. It's about knowing mm -hmm. how to how to present it to the person. This this is this is also kind of in itself maybe a hidden lesson for people to basically know their audience, know who they're interacting with, and know how to you know present what you have to offer so that it's satisfying for them. They like it. Exactly. This is, yeah, this is a hidden lesson. See, they teach it. It's just like really hidden in, <laughs> in the system. <laughs> yeah, the thing is about, um, Connected, about yeah. education. I think that uh, it's true. It's true. This, these kind of things, um, it would be awesome if it's taught from uh, a more basic level. People learn that um, students, children, they learn how basically this all works. It's true. But this is not the case, and that's uh, that's the reality we are in right now. And if we try to change it, as with almost all things that we try to change regarding systems and society, it's not going to be today and tomorrow. It's not going to be overnight. It's going to take time. So we have to accept the reality that this is not the case right now, and it's probably not going to be the case for a while, even if we start changing it now. So mm -hmm. in that context... What can we do? Um, what can we do to promote this kind of thinking? What we can only we can only push them, the students um, or the younger um, wannabe entrepreneurs. We can only push them towards that direction. So how can we do that? This is an interesting topic as well that you know can yeah. be bridged. Yeah. Firstly, I would say like live the lifestyle first and inspire others through your actions yes. and. That that's maybe the best way to get someone else on board and to understand that if they are on the fence, yeah, they know that they, they can reach out to someone who has done it before, you know. And, exactly. And if if you walk if you walk that mm -hmm. path before that other person, it's like you've always like you've already cleaned out the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. You've been through it, and you can teach that. Uh, Along. Yeah. So that's a really good analogy. You've you've beaten mm -hmm. down the road. You've prepared it a bit, and now he's gonna. And walk. Then you can hold their hands and say, "Look, this is the road you you can take, and <laughs> it's not gonna be easy. But mm -hmm. here's all the things that I did in the beginning, so that you can you can get started and just fly on your own now." Yeah, it, it, and then it would be kind know. of like starting your own school, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not really. Yeah. What? It's not really a school. It's school I of thoughts. It's yeah, a school of school. Kind of, yeah, a mindset school. Exactly. The idea that's is not that, to yeah. teach them. The mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's that's another thing. The idea should not, not spoon be spoon feeding. Yeah, no, no, forget about spoon feeding. But it should not be about teaching them financials, for example. I don't think um, if we are going to tackle education and so on, I don't think we should be teaching, for example, financials or teaching them how to be self-employed. I think we should teach them how how to learn. So that they are never limited oh, by things yeah. that they are doing. They can learn Smart on their learning. own. learning. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. See? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. In you want to change you know? the system. And, 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 why, and you, why you want to do that? <laughs> I, I think you've got, yeah, you've got to self-learn and you've got to know how to learn. And maybe where we should start things is to 
inspire and instill a strong why first. Why do you have to do that? What, what, what's your why? And for me, at this point in my life, and it changes along the way, at, depending on the moment that you are in your life, basically. And right now, my why of doing it is basically to be so financially strong that it can shield myself and my family from any financial disaster that come, can come along. Basically, like we, we saw it with this COVID situation. It's hard yeah. and it's really yeah. hard on people. And like getting that why gives you the, the strong drive to do things in line, in line with, with, with your vision and what you want to achieve in the end. But it changes along the way. But you have to be able to find that why. And maybe that's the one thing that we can instill to people to find their why first. Why they want to do it if they will have to do it. Yeah, true. The, the idea is for them to, to go um, to find... Ah, ne I think Neha mentioned it in the comments. <laughs> to, teach the, to teach them how to find their own path. They need, to be able, they need to be able to question. This why is very important. They need to be able to question things. Question exactly. what they do and know why they are doing it. They, they should not just do something um, because they because were told to. Because you tell to, them oh. to do it. Exactly, yeah, yeah, that's not even us. Not even if we, like, if like, we like, for example, train them, for this, example. This self-learning thing. We can tell people, yeah, you have to self-learn. But mm -hmm. do they why? know that in order for you to be motivated to self-learn, you have to know, you have to, what, why are you doing this in the end? Like, you want to provide more value so that you can get more money out of it. And mm -hmm. how do you get to provide more value? You have to upskill. And how do you get to that upskilling? You have to learn. And probably how you have you to self-learn. <laughs> exactly. to self-learn, yeah. <laughs> now, the, the day you start to ask yourself the question, how, how do I learn this? That's, you started on self-learning. You, you are now on the right track mm -hmm. to self-learning. That's the right question to start it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, we have a comment from Ish. Um, yeah, this is this is actually quite a valid one. I'm not sure we're going to dive too deep into that, but um, so basically, the people who criticized this system, for example, the education system and so on, two decades ago, today they are teachers and they are lecturers, and yet the system has not changed. Um, so basically, Ooh. his uh, his take is that it's not the education system that may be the issue. It's more about the 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 rule makers who who is uh, defining that system. Um, that's that's a very hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very hot topic to touch. Um, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stay on the <clears throat> I'm gonna stay on uh, you know ashore and that get on that rocky boat by saying that <laughs> um, yeah it may be true um, that it may be true that this, the problem is with the education system it may be true that it's with the the rule makers but um, at the end of the day. Um, like I said, if you, you know that this is the case right now, so at the end of the day, all we can do for this is um, ask ourselves, what can we do and why? <laughs> mm. Why are we doing it? And uh, we all do our part. I think that it's we are seeing a, a great increase um, in people who are going down this path. Uh, there's a lot of interest. That's true. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of interest. A lot of people who are maybe right now working working in companies or something. They they have this curiosity. They want to they want mm -hmm. to try it out. Um, and and I've seen an article recently, yeah. basically saying that in the future, because of this whole COVID situation changing how things are and shaping how things will be, more and more companies will be hiring freelancers and will be adopting this no no physical office mindset. And yeah. everyone should be re working remotely from, from their remote location, basically. And this goes alongside with freelancing because you have to be flexible at some point. And the companies can kind of want someone who is flexible who, who, and who can, uh, where they can rely on many flexible people at the same time. It's not yeah. really maybe going down the employment uh, road as we know it today. And it's just an interesting article that I read that more and more companies will be moving on this in that direction. Side, in that direction. Yeah. And maybe yeah. now is a good time to start it. Why it not? is. It it always was a good time to start it, but right now, yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's the time the to um, it could be a better time. <laughs> yeah, it's a better time. 
um, it makes all the sense in, in the world. It's, um, we, we did paint like a, a heavy picture of self-employment uh, about nine to nine and so on. But I, don't, I, I do want to throw this out there that um, even if it's nine to nine, even if you have to put so much more effort, uh, what you have to understand is um, it's on you. So you are doing it for you knowingly um, on mm -hmm. purpose because you know you want to do it for yourself and this opens a, a different way of thinking where um, it's not like I have to put in um, 10 hours of work but mm. like I have you know I just got stuff to do <laughs> and, and you do it um, and uh, you know that what you need to do basically to continue to build on your vision and this is exactly what gives you that drive and and that momentum to let's accumulate those hours on a day-to-day -day basis and let's say you kind of understand at the same time that it's not the amount of hours that you do yeah. it's what you put into those hours on a day-to-day -day basis that that will what can you show basically from build yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so um, we build a vision yeah so with that in mind with the part that um it's you in control of you know what you're you're, you're doing you do get the benefits of being self-employed no? it's not it's not like we painted this <laughs> dark picture so you do get control over your hours you do know um you have to know when you are doing things time yourself manage yourself another skill that yeah, you it's a skill learn. that you have to learn on the way as well. And also it's, a, it's an experience multiplier yourself. and this experience yeah. value multiplier becomes a money multiplier at the end. Yeah, and some, um, yeah, we've got quite a conversation going in the live chat right now. <laughs> uh, uh, Cedric, Cedric so he said that how about starting a school or provide some kind of service to help people learn how to learn. Um, a lot of people want to do it. Um, this is from already, but they are taken about aback by the fa the fear of failure. Um, the bigger picture, wow, might yes, be it. yeah, that's that's true. The fear of failure is a real thing. That's that's kind of what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that we know. I I think we both know. Maybe all three of yeah. us know, who actually want to step into launching their own thing, trying something mm -hmm. out. But mm -hmm. they also want stability and security that you get when you are not doing those things that, that's a little bit the mindset yeah the, yeah break because mm -hmm. i don't we've doing I, you know you, you have to yeah. experience it basically. you have to experience it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i'm i'm i'm, I'm going to uh, yeah go ahead you first you really <laughs> you really need to put that foot forward and and to annihilate that fear a lot of those fears they are like just in your head basically yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's not well justified. It's, it's just magnifying the risk, magnifying, uh, which will magnify the fear. But once you do the step, you, you find will out say, you will realize that yeah, you're just spotlighting this fear, and and it wasn't that frightening in the end. You know, it's uh, it's just basically doing one step at a time, building it one step at a time, and 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 you construct it along the way, and you don't have that fear anymore. It's it's not there. Mm -hmm. it's, where, where is it? <laughs> Actually, just beat uh, it with that action, with that execution. I think unless you start with it, um, you're going to see all all of the different steps that lie ahead. Each of them has certain difficulty attached to them, and you're going to see all of them compiled. And this mm. is, you know, the big bulk of fear. But once you start, <laughs> you realize it's not all at once. You you have time. You can pick it up, mm -hmm. you know, at your own pace. Uh, yeah, let's check out some more of the comments. Um, Cedric, when do we start at ah, the school? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, have, I'm gonna... we have to rename it. Let's not call it the school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not call it the school. That's true. Because that's um, the traditional naming of, let's say, this government-based indoctrination. That's what we call the call school. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably textbook definition. <laughs> but yeah, um, so we have another comment saying that uh, the learn, unlearn, and you know, learn again cycle yeah. it's yeah. it's getting shorter now, um, given how tech languages platforms is evolving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything is available a lot easier, a lot faster, um, and you that's have true. to stay relevant to tech slash experience um, to keep yourself rolling. Um, exactly. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Um, and it again beats, and actually this, 
let's let's step off the self employment business investor bandwagon for a sec and just speak about people in general even in companies even self employed or even students people in general um this thing about uh learning so that you can build your own experience build your own skill set this is not a self employed thing this is not a, a business or an investor thing this is a people thing we should mm-hmm. all have this mindset so that work is not work sure. yeah work is just an, an application of stuff that i've you know i've learned about it and i can do it so i'm going to do it <laughs> it's, it's more like that that's really true um, yeah yeah But do you so, guys have like tips and like, you know keep your skills up? She's saying we got tricks. I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm messing with you. Nah, it's um, not really a trick. Basic. It's not really tricks. It's it's more you know when you are in that process, you kind of understand basically that yeah, you're not good enough on in that thing or you don't know that thing very much but you really have mm-hmm. to do it you know as a necessity to survive in this in the in this uh, let's say uh, in this field yeah maybe a trick that i could drop one the one thing that helped me a lot is uh, it all started from university where i had to learn a lot of things on my own tech wise mm-hmm. and i mm-hmm. use a lot uh, of Uh, online learning resources and you've mm-hmm. got to find the learning resources that like speaks to you in a sense that you you like to consume the content that's on there and for me personally mm-hmm. it was pure site and it was really like that I one platform that. that allowed me to to really upskill and it was so enjoyable to consume that those content that was on pure site and maybe it just evolves along the way maybe next it becomes udemy because maybe next it becomes another platform that you kind of mm-hmm. have this first of consuming information and yeah. that kind of r- r- gets you and remains and you remain thirsty as you start doing that one thing okay. and then you get to to a learning you know press <laughs> process that you, you just get enhanced in so many ways For me, I'm gonna say um, there, there is some. It's not it's not a trick either, but um, it's something that could, it could work for some. I don't know for others. It might sound like yeah, that's not their thing to do. Um, but that's I'm the gonna. Thing. You've got to find what's your, your thing. thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. what's your thing? Um, yeah, but for for those, um, I'm gonna speak to those who actually want to try to launch their own business. They want to do something on their own. Um personally I don't believe in like um you know the black and white there is a gray area you don't have to be either employed somewhere or self employed mm-hmm. I think there's a right gray area that you can find in there where you can make you know you can kickstart yourself and then afterwards decide which whether you're going to go black or white uh, on this decision so what I mean by that is um you are employed somewhere you have uh you're employed in a company you have a job uh, but you mm-hmm. have this interest you have this curiosity you want to see what the other side is like um a few things you could do is um get in touch with people you're you're never alone there are a lot of people doing this already there are a lot of people who want to do this who share the same concerns as as, as you so um network that's the, that's a technical term mm. oh yeah <laughs> network oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> get in touch with people really important. Um, yeah really important yeah come to conference i'm not i'm not promoting conferences right now eh? <laughs> <laughs> this is just a real thing it, it worked it worked for me so i'm sharing it with you uh come to conferences devcon devfest meetups not even not techy conferences um i hear that the marketing uh the marketing side of things they have their own meetup actually this is also okay. interesting so You know, True. go to these conferences, go to these meetups, talk to people, uh, and that could be the, you know, the how can I call it, the most difficult first step because you you don't want to step out and uh, maybe you don't like to talk to people, <laughs> but you, <laughs> you do this, and you have just, to. Just to <laughs> touch on that word fear, um, maybe maybe that I can do something, you know, I can give a tip right there. Firstly, when you have Basically, why you have this fear is basically you you you're not confident enough 
to know that you can go out in the world and sell that skill. Mm-hmm. The skill that you want to sell, that you that you have right now, try to validate it on 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 some level that gives you that confidence and builds up that momentum, and then you go into it. For example, you could do certifications, and now you have ah, I have okay. a certification. Mm-hmm. It's validated from X company, or you could yeah. do anything else. Talk to some expert, and and maybe you learn that you know a lot more than you that you think you you know. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and, and, and you get to understand at which level you stand at and maybe that shapes in the confidence and then you take that, you build the momentum and you go into it. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a great addition to, to um it is. To this, you know, this topic. Um yeah, so once you you've met this is the meeting people kind of does this validation for you as well because then you get to know what's out there and you're going to see there's this guy who is actually self-employed he's an independent consultant he's a freelancer whatever he is and you're like but i i can do that so, you know that's when you, you start seeing that actually maybe you that's do the right have something thinking. <laughs> um so of course you uh, can yeah do that. that's of for course sure. you can do that so then um once you you get out of your of your shell and you start interacting with people and you start to learn what the industry what the field wants and what's mm. what's there um you start to see how you can adapt for it then comes the gray area you can start something mm. you, you you don't have to do it alone you can team up but you can start something while you are still working and you know Maybe again, this yeah. may not be for everybody, but when you know there's that trigger is when you are going to work, you know, doing your thing, but you are thinking about how I can do my thing back home. Yeah, that's, that's when, mm-hmm. yeah, that's when you start to realize that yeah, maybe I should I should try that a bit more. I should go a bit deeper into that. That's when you start. <laughs> but if you go to work and in your mind it's like, oh damn, tonight tonight I have to work on this thing again at home. <laughs> Then you you see that yeah maybe and this you wouldn't is not even the... start it. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you kind of had that mindset in the beginning, <laughs> you wouldn't even start that. Yeah, <laughs> true. So you have to be passionate and 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 really you know want to do it, and and yeah, and then that process gets started basically. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, so. Let's wrap this up. We actually went quite some time with this podcast. Um, um, went quite fast, actually. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you guys could take that last question from Linton. Where right. do you find your first customer? That's a good point. How do and you find... I have, I, have like a, I have like a really philosophical answer to that. It's probably not the one you are looking for, but I have one for that. <laughs> Really? <laughs> basically, it com- basically, for me personally, it compounded on networking, and it was from mouth to ear, mouth yeah. to ear. Yeah, mouth no, that's to the, ear. Mm-hmm. But that's the first real. Okay, that's probably the answer that <laughs> he was looking for. <laughs> that's the, that's where you find the actual customer. I'm gonna go like, uh, yeah, on the philosophical side. Where do you find your first customer? It's yourself. If I, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> at some point when you're doing something and you're you're creating something for example you're creating a product you're creating a website whatever and you look at the website and you know i would use that i you know i i need that there is something that i want in that this is the first you know you need to you need to sell it to yourself first uh, before you can sell it to someone customer. you are your first customer and then you be- you become confident and I can do this and I can sell it. I would use it. You would use it as well. Exactly. That's, it's the price. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the, I don't know what it's called. I'm going to call it the monkey effect. They're going to imitate you. So, <laughs> you know, you know what's in there. You know what's in there and you want to use it. You sold it to yourself. You know what this is for. You have, you, you feel strongly about it. And when you go to sell it, they are going to see your point. You know, the, the customer. Then you go through what Alex said, I'm networking, I'm putting yourself out there. And it's going to get a lot easier because you are confident in what you built. That's so true. you are going to present it like it's a jewel. And, you know, they're going to come. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, guys. All right. Okay. I guess uh, we can 
we should conclude. Yes, we sh really should. Of, is there anything you would like to add before we leave you, Alex? Yeah. So I, I hope that this talk has inspired others and, and that they know a little bit more about the mindset of going into these kind of things mm -hmm. of entrepreneurship, solopreneur. And yeah, thank you for being great hosts and thank you for inviting me over on this panel. I, it was a very enjoyable session. I liked it. So thanks. Till next thank time. Thank you for joining us. Yes. <laughs> And maybe um, we could add both of your uh, Twitter handles in the no. chat. Yeah, the chat. That way, if we sure. have any more questions, we could ask you. Yeah? Sure. I drop, uh, a, I drop my hand on. Awesome, Ben. Perfect. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. -bye. And you guys, you're going to see you soon with Cedric Poy with PWE. PWA, my bad. <laughs> the end of the service worker. It happens. It's, it's okay. <laughs> You're getting closer and closer. So <laughs> it was SPA before, and now it's PWA. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. I know what it so, means now. <laughs> really? What does SPA mean? Oh, we got gotcha. you. Well, single page oh. application. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> One point for me. <laughs> okay, see you guys in 10 minutes. <laughs> Cheers.